Justicia. Justice. Justicia. Temperance. Temperantia. Courage. Fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. This is Steve coming to you from Conway, Arkansas. And thank you to Jace as well as to Al for filling in as guest hosts on the last few episodes. Great job, guys. And if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to check out Verissimus, Donald Robertson's new book on Marcus Aurelius, the graphic novel. It's really quite beautiful. This week we are going to talk a bit about making progress. In the past, I have alluded to making progress towards sagehood, as if we, <laughs> I always say I'm still in the parking lot down at the base of the mountain. I haven't even gotten halfway up the hill. Uh, I'm still uh, walking uh, past the gift shop and the concession stand. But we are all walking up this hill towards sagehood. It's Hidden in the clouds, it's hard to imagine what it would be like to be consistent in all of our actions, consistent in all of our thoughts, consistent with a philosophy of life that we have chosen, unified in every way, mind, body, and soul. But that's our goal, to make progress. If we are not making progress, we are lying to others and lying to ourselves. We are wastes of space. (laughs) And so we might as well drop the Stoic moniker and just accept that we are uh, hedonistic in our outlook. I have noticed myself that a lot of people use Stoicism as a label because it sounds macho or cool or, or some aspect of it appeals to a lot of individuals, but very few individuals, at least from my perspective, once again, I'm going to couch that with my perspective, uh, seem to be practicing the philosophy online, I should say, you know, in online discussions. There's a lot of arguments, a lot of sarcasm and things that just don't belong in a discussion of a life philosophy. Um, A lot of of, of individuals promoting self-help gurus that are full of nonsense or hate uh, and and pseudoscience. And I think, uh, and a lot of folks promoting the uh, the use of stoicism as a way to be more productive in in business for example and stoicism has really nothing to do with that it's a life philosophy now yeah you might become more productive ultimately as you become a more rounded well adjusted human being that lives according to reality but it's not a hack uh to you know you could you could argue that you could have stoic inspired hacks but that doesn't make you a stoic um, I, I myself still don't claim the title of Stoic. I might say I'm a practicing Stoic. Uh, as a practitioner, I can fail uh, repeatedly. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I am nowhere near the sage. But that's something to keep in mind. Is just when you're out there in the world, we're trying to make progress. We're trying to improve. And um, we don't need to make a show of our philosophy. We need to live our philosophy. So this week, we'll step back like we used to do back in the golden era of the Sunday Stoic when I had more time. (laughs) And we're going to hear from Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, as well as Epictetus. Moral Letters to Lucilius, letter number 69 by Seneca, on rest and restlessness. I do not like you to change your headquarters and scurry about from one place to another. My reasons are, first, that such frequent flitting means an unsteady spirit, and the spirit cannot, through retirement, grow into unity unless it has ceased from its inquisitiveness and its wanderings. To be able to hold your spirit in check, you must first stop the runaway flight of the body. My second reason is that the remedies which are most helpful are those which are not interrupted. You should not allow your quiet or the oblivion to which you have consigned your former life to be broken into. Give your eyes time to unlearn what they have seen and your ears to grow accustomed to more wholesome words. Whenever you stir abroad, you will meet, even as you pass from one place to another, things that will bring you back to your old cravings. 
just as he who tries to be rid of an old love must avoid every reminder of the person once held dear, for nothing grows again so easily as love. Similarly, he who would lay aside his desire for all the things which he used to crave so passionately must turn away both eyes and ears from the objects which he has abandoned. The emotions soon return to the attack. At every turn they will notice before their eyes an object worth their attention. There is no evil that does not offer inducements. Avarice promises money, luxury a varied assortment of pleasures, ambition a purple robe and applause, and the influence which results from applause and all that influence can do. Vices tempt you by their rewards which they offer, but in the life of which I speak, you must live without being paid. Scarcely will a whole lifetime suffice to bring our vices into subjection and to make them accept the yoke, swollen as they are by long-continued indulgence, and still less if we cut into our brief span by any interruptions. Even constant care and attention can scarcely bring any one undertaking to full completion. If you will give ear to my advice, ponder and practice this, how to welcome death, or even if circumstances command that course, to invite it. There is no difference whether death comes to us or whether we go to death. Make yourself believe that all ignorant men are wrong when they say, it is a beautiful thing to die one's own death. But there is no man who does not die his own death. What is more, you may reflect on this thought. No one dies except on his own day. You are throwing away none of your own time, for what you leave behind does not belong to you. Farewell. The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 2, Number 19 Against Those Who Embrace Philosophical Opinions Only in Words Observe yourselves thus in your actions, and you will find to what sect you belong. You will find that most of you are Epicureans, a few Peripatetics, and those feeble. For wherein will you show me that you really consider virtue equal to everything else, or even superior? But show me a Stoic if you can. When or how? But you can show me an endless number who utter small arguments of the Stoics. For do the same persons repeat the Epicurean opinion any worse? And the Peripatetic, do they not handle them also with equal accuracy? Who then is a Stoic? As we call a statue Phidaic, which is fashioned according to the art of Phidaeus, so show me a man who is fashioned according to the doctrines which he utters. Show me a man who is sick and happy, in danger and happy, dying and happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Show him, I desire by the gods to see a Stoic. You cannot show me one fashion so, but show me at least one who is forming, one who has shown a tendency to be a Stoic. The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, Book 2, Number 4 Remember how long you have been putting off these things, and how often you have received an opportunity from the gods, and yet do not use it. You must now at least perceive of what universe you are a part, and from what administrator of the universe your existence flows, and what a limit of time is fixed for you, which, if you do not use for clearing away the clouds from your mind, it will go, and you will go, and it will never return. Seneca warns Lucilius that moving from one place to another constantly is a sign of disquiet. It's a sign of instability. He's trying to convince Lucilius to make progress, to, be, to uh, reform his character, and you can't do that if you're constantly bombarded by new stimuli, if you're constantly binge-watching Netflix, if you are constantly on Facebook, if you are constantly traveling. Oh, I must see Europe. Oh, I must go 
to France and dine. I must see South America. I must go to Montana. I, mu-, you know, I know these people. I, I, I know a lot of these people that are not happy unless they're traveling, unless they're away from their life. Sometimes I'm jealous of that. I'd love to get away from my life, but, but still, he's saying we can't really make progress unless we have a routine, a we have stability, we have calm in our world. Something that I struggle to find as a dad, and now for some reason I have two dogs. Oh my god, and uh, a few other things that are keeping me overly stimulated. But he also goes on to say that we need to rest as a way to break the bonds with our former life. Now, maybe this doesn't quite apply to us in reality. I, I for one, am not able to retire from my former life entirely. But we can put a, a gateway when we walk in our household between our outside life and our internal life. We are focusing on our internal life. We are trying to break old bad habits. So your former life could be just your past uh, the way you were, the, the the way you were, the way the person that you are trying to outgrow, to overcome, as it were, uh, drinking too much, partying too much, slandering others, getting on Facebook and starting stupid arguments, being worried about the news constantly, those sorts of things. We can unplug the television. We can disconnect the internet. You can put your phone on airplane mode. Uh, Seneca's talking about a long-term thing here, but if you build habits into leaving behind those bad habits you used to have, we are well on our way here. He even says uh, he knows how hard it is. Like, let's say you're trying to lose weight. Well, don't have cookies in your house. Done. You can't eat cookies if you don't have cookies. Just as he says... If you're getting over a heart heartache, you know, someone someone has left you, you miss someone, don't have their stuff laying around to remind you of them. Um, that might sound like cheating, but it's practical. This is practical wisdom we are talking about. Move on. Leave behind artifacts of the past that are going to bring you back to your old habits. He goes on to warn us, though. All of these vices that we're trying to overcome always sound promising. You know, I I I don't want to have a drink. I'm done drinking. Boy, at some point you're gonna say, "Boy, a drink sure would help me unwind right now. Would sure help me feel better right now." Well, if that's something you're trying to leave behind, it's going to sound promising as hell. So you're going to need to have that resolve, that strength to overcome it. Ambition. I sure would love to be famous and have power. That's always going to have an appeal. It's never going to suddenly sound like it's a terrible idea unless you become a sage. So keep that in mind and have fortitude. That's one of your virtues. Fortitude. Fortitude, also known as courage, is the ability to endure hardship. It's not necessarily running into battle. It's the ability to endure, to overcome temptation. Uh, So courage and temperance go hand in hand in that regard. Epictetus. Man, does he ever yell at you when you read Epictetus. He's like, listen here, Steve, you quote stoic, unquote. You are a philosopher who's in words only. You talk into a microphone. But show me a real Stoic. Show me someone who's happy in the face of death, happy in the face of starvation, happy in the face of poverty. At least show me someone who has promise of of being that way one day. Are you in that boat? Or are you an Aristotelian or a... a, uh, Epicurean in, in disguise. He, he says most of us are Epicureans. A few of us may be uh, followers of Aristotle where we, we like virtue, but we, we also really think that lots of other things are important for the, for the good life. Uh, having a good job, a good reputation, those are, those are still important, right? Those, those are, are vitally important for me to be happy. All of us fall into one of those categories yet. Yeah. None of us would make Epictetus happy. Oh, I take a cold shower every day. Okay, and then you brag about it on Facebook. So you think public acclaim is a good 
<laughs> so so these are these are uh, these are ad- admonitions from Epictetus, uh, saying even in his day when he's the head of his school, hey. Where is the Stoic out here? I don't see any Stoics in this room. I see a whole lot of posers. Posers who are not making progress. Hopefully, at least one of you will show signs of potentially being a Stoic. And Marcus recognizes this in himself when he says, How long have you been putting off becoming better? You have the opportunity. You have time. You have the present moment. But you are wasting it. You are part of the universe. You are part of the whole. Clear away the clouds from your mind. You know what you need to do. Once this time is gone, it shall never return. Get busy now. So let go of the past. Make it easy for yourself. Put away the things that are destroying your stoic progress. Give yourself a chance to succeed. Make your home your refuge from the outside world. Simplify. Make Epictetus proud. Take advantage while you have the time. Take advantage and make progress now. Do not put it off another moment. Stop asking yourself what does it take to be a good person and just be one. That's the advice from the Stoics this week. Now, for the news. Several times over the course of this podcast, I have considered stopping. I have felt like I have done what I could do, or maybe the the progress of the show wasn't uh, 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 as good as I would like, or I felt like I wasn't able to find the wherewithal to do my best job to step up and bring my best self to the microphone. And so I've thought about it and I've been vocal about it. Uh, For, for some of you, you've said, Oh no, don't quit. Or, uh, or, Oh no, you're going to quit. Don't quit. And I appreciate that. But after a lot of thought and consideration, um, I have decided that this is the last episode, at least for the time being, I always couch it with fate permitting (laughs) for the Sunday Stoic. I hate to say it's the last episode forever, because I actually do enjoy podcasting. However, I feel it's time to put down the microphone, at least in regards to this podcast, for now, for a variety of reasons. One, my home internet is crap. I have a satellite pointed up in space. When the wind blows the wrong way, it doesn't work. Um, I thought that by now, I would have more options. I thought they were going to improve the internet in my area, but I am one of those rural Americans. I'm 10 minutes from town, but I'm far enough out of town where I have no good internet options. Every time I want to do an interview of any quality, I have to go into town somewhere to find a stable internet connection. And that's just not a sustainable practice. And so I can do solo episodes like this one just fine, but collaborating with others, doing interviews, etc., that's a major problem. Having uh, a, a following like, like a, a group of patrons and interacting with them on a regular basis is a problem when my internet drops in and out, when my, inter- my video lags terribly. But also, I need, and more importantly, I need to step away and stop talking about philosophy like Epictetus warns Stop being the sheep that vomits up its grass to say, guess what I learned? Here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. Look what I, look what I learned. And spend time building my own character, my own inner citadel, practicing what I have been preaching the last five years. Maybe if I'm able to make the progress, the kind of progress I hope to make, I can come back to you and report back as a ex- more experienced practitioner. But at the moment, I feel... Like my progress is at a snail's pace. Not, I'm not blaming the podcast for that, but I, I, I do think I need. I, I feel like I'm. I can't do as good a job on the show as I would like to because I'm worried about practice. But I'm not. I'm not really pushing as hard as I should. I feel like I need to also part of my practice needs to be focusing more on being a better father, a better husband, 
uh, a more a more well-rounded human. And I feel like this show has done what I came here to do. We've had a million or more downloads now. The word is out there. I've d- I've said what I can say. Uh, I've covered the major works of the Stoics that I wanted to cover. I've l- I've let you listen in, <laughs> you know, to my failings and my attempts at progress. I want to have some time where I'm not talking about it constantly, but reflecting on it quietly and attempting to chisel away the faulty rock around the sculpture of the person I should be, trying to improve this flabby, out-of-shape 42-year-old sculpture you see before you into something a little more resilient, a little more robust. But maybe I'll be back. Maybe in a year or two, I shall have this podcast come back again or something new. But for now, my fellow listeners, my legionnaires, (laughs) for now... You can find me on Twitter, uh, Sunday Stoic. You can also uh, email me, sundaystoic at gmail.com, and I'm trying to maybe have a blog, sundaystoic at blogs, uh, dot blogspot dot com, where I can keep uh, ideas posted every once in a while. You can also find old episodes of the podcast uh, on YouTube. They will be available on... Uh, or on on you know iTunes and things for a while until I quit paying the bill for podcast hosting. Uh, but I will also try in the next year or so. It'll take me a while to get all the episodes that I've that I still have uploaded to archive.org so they can live on uh, for those who want to find the show back again. So from the bottom of my stoic heart. May all of you have a smooth flow of life. I hope to see you further on up the road. Keep in touch. Carpe diem. Yeah, bro.